So hi everyone. Uh, today now we are going to talk about uh, fracture metatarsals. So fracture metatarsal, if you look at it, they are one of the most common bones that get fractured in the foot and ankle region, but still they are not yet very frequently talked about. I mean, I've attended a lot of foot and ankle conferences and uh, I haven't heard, really heard anyone really talking about metatarsal fractures because we know that most of them can actually be managed non-operatively. So there isn't any point of discussion. But I just thought that maybe just for the sake of completion, I'll be talking about uh, the metatarsal fractures as well and uh, primarily to look at what are the things that you need to evaluate for each and every metatarsal fracture and also uh, touch base upon the fifth metatarsal base fracture which actually is very common and we all uh, know how to treat it but uh, is there anything else about it. So talking about uh, the fractures, uh, they are uh, one of the most common fractures as I mentioned. So 35% of all the foot fractures are actually, they happen in the metatarsal. Uh, most common in uh, the second to fifth decade. So it starts in the young, but it can go all the way to the uh, slightly older population as well. Uh, if you look at the fractures itself, they are more common in uh, females uh, as per the epidemiological studies. But uh, when we talk about fractures, specifically fifth metatarsal fractures, when they happen in athletes, uh, they are more common in males. Most of the times it is uh, a part of uh, low energy trauma, but multiple metatarsal fractures, including proximal fractures, uh, can happen in uh, the road traffic accidents as well. So when we talk about classification of metatarsal, actually there isn't any significant classification of metatarsal, uh, but uh, we can always uh, classify based upon the location, which area, uh, which metatarsal is involved uh, by that uh, and whether it is single or multiple. So most commonly it is single metatarsal fractures, which is more than 80% and uh, uh, the other thing multiple generally can happen in uh, all the five metatarsal or two, three, four or three, four, five. It can be any combination. When we talk about single metatarsal fracture, the fifth metatarsal is one of the most commonly fractured bone. But if we talk about multiple metatarsal fractures, uh, most of the times the distribution for that is uh, a bit more homogeneous and every metatarsal is equally involved in those injuries. Then based upon the location, so we have three different uh, um, type of uh, metatarsal fractures. So fifth is considered as one which is, as I mentioned, which is the most common. The second one is the central metatarsal fracture which involves second, third and fourth. And the third which is the least common is first metatarsal and most of the times whenever it is involved, it is involved as a part of Lisfranc injury. Since we have already had a talk on uh, Lisfranc uh, injury, so I wouldn't really be talking about the proximal metatarsal fractures in this case. Uh, another way to classify them is whether it is traumatic versus stress injuries because uh, metatarsals uh, are uh, one of the most uh, frequently injured bone uh, due to uh, stress reactions. So uh, even if we talk about fifth metatarsal, so 80% of the single metatarsal uh, fractures involve uh, the fifth metatarsal and uh, when we distribute it from proximal metatarsal to shaft and to distal which includes the neck or maybe the spiral fractures what we call as a dancer's fracture. So 70% of the fifth metatarsal fracture roughly uh, involve the proximal metatarsal, 20% in the shaft and 10 or even less than 10% involve the distal metatarsal region. So just uh, a bit about the anatomy, so we know that the metatarsal by itself is a, a prismoid shaped bone which uh, is uh, uh, more uh, uh, broader proximally and as you grow distally it tapers down and when we look at the cross section it is more uh, uh, you know broad proximally and it is almost like wedge uh, shaped specifically the proximal area uh, so the articulation is more of wedge shaped manner uh, we already know that the tarsometatarsal metatarsal joint uh, forms uh, something like uh, a keystone uh, which might have been discussed in the um, Liz Frank injury as well. Uh, they form a very stable articulation with the second uh, TMT joint being the keystone uh, of uh, the Roman arch uh, formed by the proximal metatarsal articulation. Um, when we talk about the distal articulation, so if you look at it, uh, if you look from the side, generally if this is the metatarsal, the articular surface is all, it extends a bit more distally as well. So you need to know that the articular surface of the metatarsal is not just uh, uh, 
if this is the proximal phalanx the articular surface may be starting from here but distally uh, or plantarly it goes uh, further posterior so that is something that you need to uh, be aware of and the flexor tendons are actually just passing underneath that and so that is why if there is a break in the metatarsal uh, neck fracture most of the times uh, the uh, injury due to the injury the prox the distal uh, articular surface or the distal fracture fragment may displace plantar words similarly when we talk about the proximal one so second t uh, second metatarsal if we look at it uh, this actually forms a very stable articulation with all the three cuneiforms so this is the medial this is the middle and this is the lateral so if you look at it it forms uh, a very stable articulation with all the three uh, cuneiforms uh, as well as the second and the first metatarsal and that is why uh, the second TMT joint is the most stable minimum movement happens at this area and as a result a lot of time the stress uh, is transmitted because of lack of movement around this area the stress is transmitted around uh, the second metatarsal shaft and that is the reason that the second metatarsal is one of the most commonly uh, 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 you know affected bone in stress fractures and uh, not just the second the next most common is the third one which also is a very stable joint